A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Toto had turned their horses toward Fort Harmon after investigating reports that another Indian uprising impended in Dakota Territory. As the trail widened into a military road, telling them they neared the army post, they discussed their findings. The masked man was saying, From what we saw, it doesn't appear that Chief Red Wolf and his tribe of Santee Sioux have any intention of turning hostile. And that's so, Kimasabi. Santee tribe's still an old camp. Other four tribes, all jump reservation. It isn't like the Sioux Nation to start serious trouble unless the tribes are united. Real name of Sioux is Dakota. That mean united. The army doesn't act too hastily. The example of the Santees may influence the other tribes into returning to the reservation without a fight. Red Wolf got plenty power, and soldiers better be careful how them handle him. Him proud, plenty smart. That's why I want to get a message to the commanding officer at Fort Harmon. Look, their fort down in Valley. Seemed like a poor place for it. I suppose it was built there so the cavalry would have room to maneuver. Not even have stockade. Give Scotty his head, Toto. Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout. Meanwhile, a young woman and a cavalry officer had seated themselves on a sheltered rock a short distance from the fort. She was Lucy Warren, daughter of the colonel commanding the garrison. Her companion was Lieutenant Tom Lyons. He was saying, Lucy, we'd better break our engagement. It'll take months of hard campaigning to round up those Sioux. I'll wait. I'll always wait. Even if I come back alive, it'll be the same thing over again. The government will break any new treaty it makes with the Indians just as it did the old ones. Do you think the Indians are in the right? Oh, of course they are. The crooked politicians and land speculators are using the army to exterminate the Sioux and steal their lands. Tom, don't be so bitter. I can't help it, darling. They're making a hired killer and thief of me, and for what? A pay rate that won't even let me support a wife decently. But you'll be promoted, Tom. You've worked hard to fit yourself for a captaincy. You've studied Indian languages until you know them better than any of the civilian scouts. <laughs> civilian scouts. Squaw killers and horse thieves, all of them. They loll around the post in their greasy buckskins, fouling the air and leering at the women. 
A and no one has any authority over them except your father. But all Dad can do is fire them. And he won't because they're needed so badly just now. I told him about that fellow called Pony Jim. Oh? Uh -huh. What about him, Lucy? He's always hanging around where he can watch me. Dad said not to mind him. Why, that... I'll break his neck. Break my what? neck, huh? It's that pony Jim. You sneak, you've been spying on us. <laughs> Scouting's what I'm hired for. I figured some engine might be hiding here watching the Ford. You're a liar. I don't take that from no Louis. Then take this! Oh. Why, you... Tommy's got a gun! Hold it, fella! A masked man! Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Now, don't hold shoot, it. I'm pony Jim, the Army Scout. Hello, uh, keep him covered. Uh, me watch him. What's the trouble, Lieutenant? This fellow was watching us. But who are you? Well, I wanted you to know I wouldn't be masked. You, Scout, host of that gun and get out. Sure. Sure, but I'll get square with all of you. Masked man, I'm Lieutenant Tom Lyons. And this is Miss Warren, my fiance. How do you do? How do you do? We're grateful if there's anything I can do. I... As it happens, there is something. Tell the colonel he probably can keep the Santee Sioux neutral by sending a peace mission to Chief Red Wolf. The tribe is still at its old camp. That's good news, mister. I'll certainly tell Colonel Warren. And we may see you later. Come on, Silver. And watch Scout. Tom reported the masked man's message to Colonel Warren a little later, making no mention of his trouble with Pony Jim. As he concluded, the colonel, a veteran of the Civil War, eyed him sharply. Lieutenant Lyons, I wouldn't ordinarily put any faith in the word of a masked man. But what he told you confirms other reports I've had about the Santee tribe. Will you act on his advice, sir? I'm detailing you to visit the Santee village. You know the Sioux language and have a way with Indians. Yes, sir. Tell Chief Red Wolf that I will double the tribe's allotment of beef if he keeps the peace. Are you sure you can keep your promise? Don't sir? question my word, Lieutenant. I, I'm not questioning it, sir. But I doubt that the crooks in the Bureau of Indian Affairs who started this trouble will back you up. By the guns of Gettysburg, I believe you are an Indian sympathizer. You speak as though you'd heard I was, sir. I hadn't intended to mention it, but you were so reported by one of the civilian scouts. Pony Jim, I suppose. No matter who he was. I reprimanded him for spying. Now I'm warning you, Lieutenant. Don't ever criticize your government or the army again. What I said was the truth, sir. And it was only intended for Lucy's ears. Just the same you were overheard. Your opinions are such that they would encourage desertion and mutiny if they got about. They might send some poor private to the firing squad. I didn't realize... Then by the sharpshooters of Shiloh, keep your mouth shut after this. This is the army. Do we obey orders whether they're right or wrong? Yes, sir. Now about your mission to Red Wolf. Requisition whatever presents you want to give him from Quartermaster Stores. Take two scouts, Pony Jim and Montana Mike. Why, I... Any questions, Lieutenant? No. None, sir. I'll start for the Santee camp at once. Get him. Get him. Come on. Well, shave tail. Here's the Treaty River. Stop here. Ho, ho, ho. We're within five miles of Red Wolf's village. So it's time for an understanding. An understanding, huh? <laughs> Mike, this should be good. <laughs> so far, I've let you fellas have your own way. I've put up with your insults. But when we meet the Indians, I expect you to show me the respect due my uniform and rank. The success of the mission may depend on that. Who gives a hang how you come out with the engines? Hey, Mike, there's a bunch of engine ponies close by. Do you see those tracks? Yeah, we'd better get down. Easy, boy. Uh, 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 yep, they've been grazing here. Oh, I see the herd. It's down there in the valley. Well, I'll be jiggered. Must be 40 or 50 ponies there. And only two engine kids are on watch. That shows Red Wolf isn't expecting trouble or fixing to make any. If he was, he wouldn't let even a small bunch of ponies like that get so far from camp. Well, then let's ride on. Now, listen, you engine-loving Louie. That herd will be worth $500 to us when we run it off. Now, we can wait. kill them kids easy. Get a 30-mile start before Red Wolf knows about it. Now, listen, if you fellas are joking, you've gone far enough. Jump him, Jim. I got him. Now, give me a hand. Let loose of me. Hands still out. Twist off your arm. Pay for this. Not for your sake, sir. 
So you intend to kill me, huh? That's right, Shave Tail. I don't forget easy. We aim to leave you out here for the buzzards, even if we hadn't spotted them ponies. Well, you've got me, but let those children and ponies alone. Don't make the Santees hostile. The more hostiles there are, the more boodle for us. Plug him, Jim. No, no. Shooting it scare them Indian boys with the herd. I'm using my gun barrel like this. Oh. Hit him for me. Sure, Mike. <laughs> Looks like he's finished. Well, he ought to be. I near busted my gun on his head. What are we going to tell the colonel? We'll say the engines are on the warpath when we got here. So we run off some of their ponies and somehow got separated from this shave tail during the ruckus. But he'll send soldiers out here. They might find his carcass. They'll blame the engines. Not if we don't strip him. Same as the redskins would do. <laughs> Help me get his uniform. All right. We can burn it later on. A few minutes later, the murderous scouts were gone and Tom lay naked on the riverbank. The shadows of circling buzzards drifted over his body... But though he lay motionless through the heat of the day, the birds did not light. Some instinct warned them that he still lived. His own awareness of life did not come until sunset. Then as a glimmer of consciousness penetrated his brain, he dragged himself through mud like a wounded animal to the nearby water. After he had slaked his burning thirst and ducked his aching head into the cooling shallow water, more of the cloud lifted from his mind. Something had happened to him. His pain told him that. But what? Of a sudden, he realized that his loss of memory did not end there. He was somebody, a human being, but whom? Where had he come from? What had he been doing? Where was he now? Desperately, he questioned himself, but the answers lay beyond the reach of that part of his mind, which was clear. Under the strain of his efforts, he dropped back into unconsciousness. When again he roused, it was to the hammering of hoofs on the bank. Hard upon that sound came a burst of savage yells. A moment later, he was surrounded by a band of Santee Sioux headed by Chief Red Wolf. Lurching to his feet, Tom faced the Indians with childlike wonder. He felt no fear of the fierce warriors or the weapons they held poised. To him, they were fellow humans. The Sioux themselves, children of nature, instantly realized that there was something unnatural in the white man's behavior. Red Wolf said, To Tom, who had not attempted to use the power of speech, the gutturals of the Sioux language meant nothing at first. Then another part of his mind began to function. He found that he not only understood, but could answer. Words tumbled from his tongue. Oh, I... Dakota. Wash Tatomi. Oh, I... My brothers, this man speaks the tongue of the Dakotas. E, I... Hodogansha. Wash the Hilo. This chief understands what you say. How is it that we found you in the river wounded? Great chief, I do not know. I have awakened from a strong sleep, and all that went before it has gone from my head. Am I... Am I not your brother? Ah, uh, you are a white man. Your people have stolen ponies from us and killed the children who watched them. My brothers say that the sign shows your people wounded you. How is that? Only Wak and Tonka, the great mystery, can answer that. I... I did not know till now that I was white. My brothers, this is very strange. This man has no fear. He acts like an Indian. It may be that the spirit of an Indian entered my body while I slept. Oh, Allah. My brothers, it is clear that the white man's wounds have turned his head. It is bad medicine to kill such a man. We will take him with us and break camp. Koka! Ashtihilo. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was several days after Tom's capture when the Lone Ranger and Toto discovered that Red Wolf and his tribe were gone from their old camping grounds. They rode on. After a careful search for trail sign, which took them in the direction of Fort Harmon, Tonto observed, Rain wash out all tracks since tribe moved. Wouldn't have moved if something hadn't happened to turn Red Wolf hostile. And um, what we do now? Get another message to the fort. Look there, Kim Sally. Plenty of ashes. Who's over? Who? Who's got off Let's get down. He's a big fellow. I want a closer look. Uh, uh, no Indian build fire like that. Something more than wood was burned here. Ah, uh, here. Here, me find piece of cloth. Yes, that's part of an army uniform. And here's a charred holster flap with a name on it. Kimasabi, here comes soldier. It's the Fort Harmon Cavalry. The bugle sounded a halt. Around those men! Troopers! We're friends. Count for yourselves in that mask. Colonel, I have something to tell you. It's important that you believe what I say. Here, examine this cartridge. I hope it will identify me. Cartridge? It will account for the mask. This, this bullet. Hmm. It's made of silver. May I keep it? Uh, yes, of course. I shall always treasure it. Now, you said that you had something to tell me. Please proceed, sir. Red Wolf and his people apparently have jumped the reservation. I expected that. I sent these scouts and an officer to the Santees as a peace mission. They attacked the party. The officer is missing. Is he Lieutenant Tom Lyons? Yes, but... His uniform and equipment were burned. Here, look at this holster flap. By the sabers of Seven Pines, you're right. Jim, Mike, how do you account for this? We don't, Colonel. It's like we said. He come up missing while the engines was chasing us. No engine would burn a soldier's uniform after stripping him. There's no trace of a body here. Colonel, that mask fell and his engine partner are the ones who said the Santees was friendly. They're in cahoots with the Redskins. You ought to arrest them. Uh, one moment, sir. Do you know that there was ill feeling between this scout Jim and Lieutenant Lyons? So my daughter told me after I'd sent them on the mission. I never laid a hand on the Louis. Jim and Jim got to be right friendly again. That burned uniform suggests that you two murdered him. Why, you... Listen, maybe he joined the Indians. He was for them. That's it. He burned his uniform himself. Like deserters do. Impossible. He was an officer. Sergeant, keep an eye on these scouts until further orders. Uh, yes, sir. We'll search every inch of the country around here for the lieutenant's body. It should tell us who killed him. As for you, sir? Yes, Colonel. Will you join us? You have met enough, Colonel. It will be better if Todd and I try to find the Santee tribe. Very well, sir. Bugler, sound forward. <laughs> In the meantime, Red Wolf had set up a new camp deep in the Badlands. There, Tom was established more as a tribal medicine man than a captive. While his head wounds soon began to heal, his memory of his previous life remained blank. Then in a wigwam, he found an old army bugle. As he examined it, he murmured, ah, it's strange. It's strange. What does my brother say to himself? This horn brings something back to my mind, but... I cannot tell what. Let my brother try to blow it. Yes, I'll try. I've done it. Hoa, hoa. My brother is great medicine man. It is well that I saved his life. I owe you much. Then teach me the magic of this horn. I shall teach my warriors to fight by the song it sings. We shall capture the white man's fort. Hush to hear, Listen and learn. Although Tom did not remember it, he had been a trumpeter in the Corps of Cadets at West Point. And under his instruction, the Santee chief quickly learned to sound the elementary calls. Several days later, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode into the Needle Butte Pass area. Still searching for Red Wolf's new camp, they followed the summit of a brush-clad ridge which afforded concealment as well as a chance for wide observation. The masked man was saying... There's a break in the brush just ahead. That'd be a good place to look around. Listen, the army bugle call. It came from that open flat below us. Oh, how soldiers get down there without us knowing? We'll soon see. Close oh, 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 easy oh, oh, look down there. A half mile away, hundreds of Indians were drilling like regular army cavalrymen. From a bare hill much closer, two other riders watched them. One wore the war bonnet of a chief. 
From time to time, he sounded the bugle. That red wolf, fellow with him, looked like medicine man. Oh, he's a white man in disguise. No Indian ever sat on a horse like that. Oh, this plenty strange. What them warriors do now? They're executing a new kind of cavalry movement. Red Wolf is using a long column of braves like a lariat, throwing one tightening loop after another around an imaginary group of enemies. Red Wolf, plenty good general. Now the whole band of Sioux is disengaging and falling back into the cover of the brush on the other side of the flat. If soldiers get caught like that, them lost. That must never happen for the good of both sides. Look, Kimasabi, big dust cloud on skyline. Yes, that means soldiers. Red Wolf will make real use of his trick if he finds out they're coming. Scout at end of alley, already see dust. Him head for chief. Follow me. Get him up, scout. Breaking from the bush, the Lone Ranger and Toto charged down one slope and were well up the other before Chief Red Wolf turned his attention from the onrushing scout to them. Chief got rifle strapped to back. Other fella, not armed. He's Lieutenant Lyons. And what we do? You capture him and meet the troops and warn them. Scout warn Chief. Chief gonna blow bugle. I'll take care of him. Freeing his rifle with one hand, the Chief lifted his bugle with the other. The masked man's guns began to hammer. The scout wheeled and drew off. The horn gave forth a single blast. Then a 45 slug ripped through the bugle, tearing it from the Chief's hand and lips and silencing it forever. Red Wolf whirled, leveled his single shot rifle over his pony's neck and fired. The bullet clipped hair from Silver's flying mane. An answering shot from the masked man's Colts broke the chief's gun stock. Dazed by the whirlwind of action, Tom had remained immobile until that instant. Then, believing that his red friend's life was in danger, he threw his pony into Silver's path. Over, Silver! The impact of the mighty stallion hurled him headlong from his bareback mount. He fell groaning. A moment later, Tonto had the inert body of the young officer draped over his saddle pommel and was on his way to the safety of the ridge. Red Wolf, too, was in flight. He was yelling... Come on, big fella. Keep him going. Red Wolf's warriors, who had just learned to obey the medicine horn, were slow to understand his call for help. He and his pursuer had vanished into the brush before they started to his rescue. The Lone Ranger followed the Santee chief through alder thickets and clumps of dwarf pine, determined to run him to earth without injuring him. In the meantime, Colonel Warren halted the advancing cavalry and conferred with his senior officers and scouts. Major, I've been thinking about the message Bear Tooth brought us. Saying Lieutenant Lyons was with Red Wolf? Yes. That traitor may have laid a trap for us. What do you think, Jim? Well, Colonel, hey, I'll listen, tell you. Jim. There's a horse coming. Uh, it's an engine. He's packing another barman. Well, he's the masked man's friend. Most oh, ho fella. Ho fella. Colonel, plenty Sioux beyond ridge. Them know you coming. This critter's in with lions. He got some trick fixed up. Me got lions here. Him knocked out by fall. Me capture him. Sir, help me, Hannah. It's a shave tail. Tom Lyons. A man I liked and trusted enough to take into my own family. And there he is, a traitor to his race, dressed and painted like an Indian. Major, do your duty. Yes, sir. Sergeant, tie him to the nearest tree. Yes, sir. Easy there. Come on, you scouts. Right. Give me a hand with the hombre. Sure, I'm glad to see him get his comeuppance. First squad, A troop, draw carbines and dismount. Fall in on the right. But, Colonel, that fellow not conscious. It's merciful that he isn't. Are you ready, Sergeant? Ready, sir. Take aim. Hold your fire. Hold it. It's the masked man. He's captured Red Wolf. Hold him, hold him, hold him. Easy, steady, big fella. I had to outride and rope the chief before I could talk to him. But we've had our talk now, and I'm freeing him. He's a witness. Explain that, mister. Red Wolf told me that he and his tribe jumped the reservation because two white men killed some of their children and stole a pony herd. Red Wolf found footprints of the two men near the dead children. He followed the footprints. They led to Lieutenant Lyons, who lay on the ground badly beaten. When he regained consciousness, he could remember nothing from his past life except the bugle calls. Hmm. And the lieutenant is not responsible for what happened. Those scouts reported that he had turned deserter. I... The colonel broke off sharply and turned toward the two scouts. They stood tense and poised for action. Their hands moved to their guns. Then Red Wolf spoke. Those two fellow were beads taken from dead Indian boy. Those two fellow kill Indian boy. I'll kill you for that. Now! Get him! Get him! 
won't get me alive. Grab him. They're trying to escape. Get him. Take our two. A bullet from the Lone Ranger's gun broke Pony Jim's arm when he tried to shoot Red Wolf. Montana Mike had no chance to draw. The soldiers closed in fast, disarmed him, and made him prisoner along with Pony Jim. The guild of those two has been established. Cut the lieutenant loose, then call the surgeon in the ambulance from the rear. The ambulance is on the way, sir. Cut him loose, man. Colonel, I promised Chief Red Wolf full justice if he will lead his tribe back. Red Wolf, these killers will hang. The Santee tribe will get everything they own as compensation. And the scoundrels are rich. Do you understand me, Red Wolf? Ah, uh, me savvy. Wash the hilo. Very well. You are exonerated. And I guess that you can thank the mask man. Mask man, best friend Indian never have. Oh, here's the ambulance. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Where's oh, Tom? There he is. Tom. Lucy. Oh, Tom. Your daughter stowed away on that ambulance, Colonel. I'm glad she did. Oh, Lucy, darling. Did you hear that? He spoke to my daughter. Did you? He's conscious. More than that, Colonel, he remembered your daughter. Then he must be cured. He has his memory back. It's a miracle. The shock of his fall must have restored his memory. Red Wolf's warriors are coming. We've been trapped. Bugler, sound to arms. I'm taking that bugle. He's given it to Red Wolf. The chief is showing himself to his men. He's stopping. The warriors have halted. They're turning back. Oh, sir, you deserve a citation. What can we do for you? For me? <laughs> Major, I've seen Lieutenant Lyons recover. I've seen the crooked scouts exposed and Red Wolf exonerated. That's all I could possibly have asked for. Now I'll leave. You've made a lot of people grateful. Thank you, Major, and adios. Me go with you. Montilla! Major, Major, where are the masked man and Chief Red Wolf going? They're leaving, Colonel. I wonder who that masked man is. I can tell you, Major. So can I. The Indian told me he's the Lone Ranger. Montilla! This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.